Okay, so there's these two things if you're in physics in the second semester of physics. There's the electric field and there's the magnetic field. And really, um, the, the main point of the course is this connection between electric and magnetic fields, uh, which all ends in Maxwell's equations. There's four equations that give the relationship between charge, electric, and magnetic field. And it's super important. It's super important. Um, but at the beginning, we, we were at this position where it's like electric, magnetic field, what? Uh, so there's a lot of things to talk about here. Uh, so I'm going to go over, I'm going to tell you the difference between the electric magnetic field, and I'm going to make a, a visual model in Python uh, to show the electric and the magnetic field. And, and this is really important for the magnetic field uh, because the magnetic field is inherently a three-dimensional thing, so it's kind of hard to draw on paper. If we do this in Python with uh, GlowScript v Python, uh, we can model it. So let me just get started and talk about the electric field. I'll model the electric field, and then we'll jump back and do the magnetic field. So let me turn this thing off. Okay, so the electric field. This one's not so bad, and you probably already have a good feeling for it anyway. So if I have an electric charge, let's say I have, actually let's do this the, the formal way. So here's my x and y axis, and then I have some charge right here, Q. It turns out that this charge makes an electric field. The electric field is a region around space in which other electric charges experience a force. I know that's really kind of weird, but, but that's true. Okay, and you could call this Coulomb's law if you want. I'll write that down in just a second. But let's say I, I want to find the electric field at some place right here. This is the vector R observation, and this is the, the vector, I'll call that RQ, the location of the charge. Then I need this vector R, and where R is equal to R observation minus RQ. So it's the vector from the charge to the point of where I want to find the electric field. Now often, often we'll put that charge at the origin just to make things easier, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, that's important. And it is important too that we're dealing with vectors. Okay, both the electric and the magnetic field are vectors, and that's very important to remember. If I know that, if I know that vector R, then the electric field will point in the same direction as R depending on the charge. But let me just go ahead and write down the electric field due to a point charge. E equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over the magnitude of R squared. You can't square a vector. you got to take the magnitude first. But then in order to make this a vector again, I have to multiply by R hat. So R hat is a unit vector pointing away in the same direction as R. So we define R hat as the vector r divided by the magnitude of the vector r. I know that seems silly, but it's important. Um, so a lot of times you'll see people write it just like this. Uh, e equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r squared. That's fine. You can write that. Uh, and then some people write it like this. k q over r squared. Again, fine, but it's not the vector electric field. And that's really important because imagine I have two charges um, right there, and I want to find the electric field right here. In order to do that, I need the vector electric field from this one and the vector electric field from that one. So you, you, this doesn't work unless you do some mental gymnastics to make it into components and stuff like that. So it's just better to, to deal with it this way. Uh, this const this uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is a constant. So... 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught equals 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meter squared per coulomb squared, when coulomb is a unit of charge. Okay, finally, there's one other thing about electric field, and that's this. F equals Q. No, that's not right. QE. So this says, and I'm going to write this again. These are the two important things. This is what creates an electric field. And if I put a charge in an electric field, it experiences a force. So what I want to do now is switch over to Python. And I'm going to put a charge and then pick some locations around there to display the electric field. And, and I think that's not too difficult to visualize in your head. But it's harder for magnetic fields. So I want to do it first for electric field, just to be fair, right? you got to be fair for both situations. So let's switch over here to Python. There we go, Python. 
Uh, and I think that's too small. Let me make that a little bigger. No. Let's see. Okay, so this is Glow Script VPython. If you haven't seen it before, uh, it's super awesome in that it has uh, three dimensional uh, capabilities in there. Let me turn off this camera because uh, you don't want to see that. And let me just show you the, the simplest, uh, if you're not familiar with uh, closed group vPython. If I just type in sphere, that's a built-in function, and I run it, I get a three-dimensional sphere. Okay, And you can zoom in and out and, and rotate it around and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. So let's go ahead and make a charge. Let's call it charge uh, and make it an object of sphere. I need to give it a position. So uh, I'm going to put this not on the x-axis, not at the origin. So let's say, let's give it a vector position of, let's make it kind of small, 0, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0. And then I need to give it a radius, the size of the sphere. Otherwise, let's say it's a meter, and that'll look weird. Uh, so let's say radius equals 0 0.001. And the color, red. We don't have to give it a color, but it's fun. And I should save this. E field and run it. There you go. There's my charge. Okay. Now I want to get an op. Let's put another point at the observation location. So let's call this OBS. It's a sphere. It's, a, it's not real. It's just where I want to draw stuff. Okay. So let's give it a position of, um, let's say, vector uh, negative 0 0.0, negative 0 0.2. 0 0.050. Zero. We can change that. You're going to give you this code. You can change that. Uh, and let's have it smaller. So it's a radius of 0 0.0002. And I'm going to leave it as no color, which will be white. And if I run that, you can't even see it. 0. Did it give me an error? No. Radius 0, 0.00, if I just do 1, okay, fine, there it is, okay. So there's my observation location, and there's my charge. Now I want to find the electric field at that location. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate R. R equals the vector, is this going to be the observation location minus the uh, charge location? So I can say that as obs.pos minus charge.pos. Now I can calculate E. E equal, I need K. I'm going to say this, uh, K equals 9E9. So I'm going to not say 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught because that's hard to write in Python. I'm going to just call it K. So now I can say E equals K. Oh, I need the charge too. So I can say charge dot Q equals, let's say it's um, 1 nanocoulomb. So 1 E negative 9 coulombs. Uh, you, can add, you can add properties to an object like that. That's kind of cool, but okay. So now I'm going to say the charge dot Q that's Q times the unit vector R and unit vectors are built into Python. So I can say times norm R that's built in to Python and also magnitude mag R squared. Now I could print E if I want to, but I want to display it. This is so this is important. So I get a value of 2000. Okay. Um, so let me just go ahead and use that and say e scale equals uh, 10 to the negative, I see 10 to the negative, three, say 1 e negative 4. Because what I'm going to do is draw the electric field. Now, if I draw the electric field, it's going to have a, it's going to have to have a distance length in real life. And so if I just use this value for the length of the electric field, it's going to be two, it's going to be two kilometers long. And that's way too big. So I'm going to have this scaling factor where I can make it smaller and that I can just change that if I want to. So let's make this E arrow equals arrow. Uh, and arrow is a built in function in Python. I uh, the position of this arrow is going to be equal to the observation location. So observation.pos. Uh, the axis is the vector from the beginning of the arrow to the end. So axis is going to be equal to E scale times E. And then I, I'm going to give it a color. Color equals color dot yellow. Let's just see what that looks like. 
That's too big. So let's make this times 10 and I get a fifth. That's pretty good. So there's my, there's my charge. There's my uh, electric field pointing away from the charge. And there you go. Um, so let's, let's do this now. Let's put the charge at the origin um, and get rid of the observation location. Uh, so let's get rid of all this stuff. I'm not going to get rid of K. I'm not going to get rid of that. Get rid of this. Uh, let's get rid of this. Let's keep E scale in there. Let's get rid of this. And let's put this at the origin. So zero, zero. Let's just uh, rerun it. Okay, there. Now what I want to do is I want to kind of make a circle around uh, the thing. So let's say R, a radius uh, of how far away do I want to plot the electric field in multiple locations. So let's say R is equal to um, 0 0.01. I'm just picking a value. Uh, and now I'm going to say N equals uh, 10. That's how, many, that's how many arrows I want to make. Theta equals 0. D theta equals uh, 2 times pi divided by n. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to use this angle theta, which I'm not going to display, to calculate the vector location where I want to calculate the electric field. And then I'll move that angle and redo it. Because if I, if I know the angle around this in the xy plane, then I can find the r location. And so let's do that. Uh, so let's just say, I'm just going to make a loop because I don't want to do it 10 times. So I'm going to say while theta is less than or equal, no, less than 2 times pi. Do the following. Number one, uh, calculate r. So r is going to be equal to r times the vector uh, cosine theta sine theta 0. And I'm going to use the same idea uh, when, when I get to the magnetic field. Uh, so, so imagine this triangle. I guess I should draw this. I'm trying to tell you. I have, I have a camera right here, right? Okay, so I mean, why skip steps? I'm in no rush. I have all day. I can do this all day. That was what Captain America said. So here is my xy plane. Here's my distance r, and I'm going to have that the vector r, but that's my angle theta. So this is going to be r cosine theta. This is r sine theta. So the vector r is going to be equal to r cosine theta, r sine theta, 0. And then what I'm going to do is just increase, I'm going to I'm going to find this location based on my theta, and then I'm going to increase that in an amount delta theta and do it again, do it again, do it again, and so forth. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Okay, so I've calculated R. Now I can calculate the electric field. E equals K times charge dot Q times norm R. It's the same equation divided by mag R squared. Now I can plot the electric field. Okay, so I don't need to give this a name. I'm just going to say arrow. Arrow equal uh, arrow position equals R, right? That's the location I want to do it. Axis equals E scale times E, and then color equals color dot yellow. I don't know why I always make the electric field yellow. Now I need to increase my theta. Theta equals theta plus D theta. Okay, let's see if this runs. No. T norm. Unidentified object is not an object. Evaluating T norm. Huh. R? Oh, I don't. Is it up here? Norm? Oh, G. That's a hard one to catch. No? Okay, let's get rid of this one. I don't actually need that. Let's see if that's where the error is. Okay, that did work. I don't know why. Oh, I didn't have an R. I didn't have R yet. Okay, so this is too big. 
So let's make this 10 to the negative sixth. Let's run it again. Still too big. Okay, I think I like that. So the electric field is radially outward in all directions. Okay, now just for fun, let's increase the value of R. Uh, so now I'm gonna go over here and say R equals 0 0.02. Uh, and then I'm going to copy all of this. And run it. Okay, that's a little weird. Uh, but the, <laughs> it worked. The electric field gets smaller as you get further away. And there you go. I could, I could make another, and I'll do this for homework for you. I could make another circle in the uh, XZ plane, and then it would look kind of cool too. But there you go. And then if I want to change this to, what if I want more vectors? It's going to look silly. I think 20 is kind of high. There's more vectors, but there you go. That's the electric field. Let's jump to the magnetic, the magnetic field. So over here... It turns out that if you have a charge, it makes an electric field. If you have a moving charge, it makes a magnetic field. So if I have this Q and it has a velocity vector V, then it make the and I want to find the location of uh, electric the magnetic field at some location R with respect to the charge, then this is the equation for the magnetic field. We use the, the letter B for magnetic field, and it's going to be equal to mu naught over 4 pi QV cross R hat, there's that unit vector again, divided by the magnitude of R squared. Now, I should jump back to the electric field also, because someone once asked me, how do you derive the electric field due to a point charge? And, I mean, you can use Gauss's law and you can use Maxwell's equations to show that it's true, but, but inherently, fundamentally, these are, de these are not derived things. These are experimentally determined. We, we do an experiment. We show that that is this case, okay? And the same thing's true here. You know, if we have a moving charge, we can show that that creates a magnetic field. Now, this is kind of important because that's not times. That's the cross product, okay? So if I have two vectors, let's just review. If I have vector A and vector B, then the cross product uh, is of another vector, and that vector, new vector, is perpendicular to both A and B. So let's say C equals A cross B. So there's only two vectors that are perpendicular to both of these. I need a, I had a pen, let me use this. I don't want to use my whole pen. Okay, so what vector is perpendicular to A and B? Two of them are this one. There's this one you can't see, but it's a pointing out of the paper because that's perpendicular to A and perpendicular to B. And the other one is the one going into the paper like that. Okay, and this will look better in 3D. Uh, I'm not going to show you the full formula of, of that, but uh, which one do you pick? This is where you use the right hand rule. So this is my right hand. Okay, so I put, I'm right-handed, so I put down my pencil to do the right-hand rule. So you want to take your right hand and let your fingers curl through A and then B. So if I do this, A and then B, my thumb is pointing into the page. So A cross B it would be into the page, and we could represent that as an X with a circle, because it's like an arrow, and you're looking at the back of it. Uh, if it was B cross A, I would do this way. I'd cross B and then A, and it'd be out of the paper, and it would look like this. A vector out of the paper looks like that, where you're looking at the tip of an arrow. Now, there's a way to calculate the magnitude of A cross B. So the magnitude of C is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them. Okay, But here you see the problem. If I have Q and V cross R hat, I have to be in three dimensions. You cannot do cross products in two dimensions. It has to be three dimensional. Okay. Um, so now another thing is this constant mu naught over four pi. Mu naught over four pi is equal to 10 to the negative seventh Tesla meter squared per coulomb meters per second. So again, it's a it's one of the fundamental constants, and we write it that way because uh, we. 
mu naught is actually an important thing. Epsilon naught is an important thing. It's easier to write them in terms of 4 pi. So that's that. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and tell you that uh, I if I have a short segment of electric current, some length of delta L with the current I coming in there, I delta L is equal to QV. They're the same thing. So if I have a little piece of a wire, it will make a magnetic field that says delta B, just due to that piece of wire, is mu naught over 4 pi I delta L vector cross R hat over the magnitude of R squared. And so you can use that to find the magnetic field due to a long, very, very long straight thin wire uh, which has a magnitude of, well, let's put a magnitude, uh, of mu naught over 4 pi times 2i over r. That's due to a long wire. Okay. Um, so how do I calculate this? Let's do this on paper, and then we'll do it on, on Python. So here's my charge. I'm going to draw my charge as coming out of the paper. So this is the velocity vector out of the paper. So now I want to find the magnetic field at this observation location. So this is R. So R hat is also that direction. So what is V cross R hat? QV, I should say. Because if Q is negative, and well, I'll show you this, it changes directions. So QV is this way. R hat is that way. So what two vectors are perpendicular to both of those? Well, I have this one and I have this one. That's perpendicular to QV, right? Because it's coming out of the paper. And that's it's also perpendicular to this. So now I can I, I put down my pen and I can use my right hand. So I want to, if I do this, if I do this, I'm gonna cross QV and then R hat. If I do uh, this, I'm going to come all the way around, and I'm going to cross R hat then Q. So I want to say it's this one. So that's the direction of B. Uh, there is an alternative rule here. There's, there, you may have seen this. Okay, this is the same thing. This is, uh, let's see, V cross. This is QV. That's R. That would be B. Okay, with your right hand. It's kind of cool to look at. Okay, let's go ahead and do this for uh, a charge and calculate the magnetic field, and then I'll do maybe a long wire. So let me switch over to Python uh, so we can do this. Okay, so in Python, I'm going to start a new program. Uh, let's just go open a new tab. And so I'm using trinket.io. It's the same thing as GlowScript. Uh, it just, uh, I like it has a, the window right next to the other thing. So the first thing I'm going to say is the constant. Um, what should I call that constant? Let's just call it m, m mu. Let's call it mu, even though it's not. It's mu not over 4 pi. Um, and so that's just going to be uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 7. And now I need my chart. Let's go ahead and put an uh, object in there. Uh, so I guess I could use the same object as before. Well, I'll, I'll, let me just put it at the origin just to make things easier. Uh, so, charge equals uh, sphere, position equals vector 0, 0, 0. Uh, the radius is 0 0.001, and it's red. Let's go ahead and also add the value of the charge. Charge dot Q equals uh, 1 times to the negative ninth. Coulombs. And now let's pick a vector r uh, that's observation location. I don't have to do r. If I have the charge at the origin, then r is the position of the observation location. So this is a vector uh, 0 0.0, let's say 0 0.01, 0 0.020. 0. Yeah. Okay, so now <clears throat> I'm going. Oh, I need the velocity too. Okay, so I let's make this one coming, uh, moving in the z direction. 
And we'll change this up in a little bit. So let's say uh, charge dot v equals vector. And I don't know about a good value. Let's make it go on pretty fast. Let's say, uh, and this is, I'm not going to move the charge. I'm just going to display the, the electric field due to it. 0, 0, uh, 500 meters per second. That might be too fast, but if it is, that's fine. So the first thing let's do this is calculate b. So b is going to be equal to mu naught over 4 pi, which is my constant mu, uh, times q, times which is charge dot q, times the velocity, charge dot v. But then I have to take the cross product with the r hat. So I need to do a cross product, and this cross product is actually built into Python. So I can say cross that first value, comma, norm r. That's qv cross r hat. Now I need to divide by the magnitude of r squared. And let's print b. That's b field. And run it. So there's my value, my uh, my magnetic field, and you see that it's it's actually quite small. But I still want to make that a little bit smaller. So I'm going to say b scale equals 0 0.1, just to make it a little bit smaller, so it'll be visible. Now let's put an arrow there. Uh, so let's just I'm just going to put an arrow. Arrow. I'm not going to give it a name. Uh, position equals r. Axis equals b scale times b and color, I guess I'm going to do yellow again. I shouldn't though. Let's make it cyan. So that, and let's make it a little bit smaller, 0, 3. Uh, a little bit smaller. So let me put in uh, the other two vectors just so we can see it in three dimensions. So let's put, make an arrow for r. So uh, arrow, uh, and I'm going to put the position at the charge.pos. I'm going to put uh, the axis is equal to r, which I already have. And let's leave it as white. And then let's put a, axis, a vector for qv. So arrow equals position equals charge.pos. Uh, axis equals q times char uh, charge dot q times charge dot v, and now that's going to be ten to the negative fifth. So I need to multiply by let's say uh, ten to the one e four, and let's make this color uh, red. Okay, something that's too big. So one e three, no e negative four. It should be negative four, right? No, that's right, because the charge is tiny. Let me see. I'm just guessing here. I should have. Hmm. Let's go negative two. Q times v charge is negative oh I have the charge is 1 e I messed everything up 1 e negative 9 okay so everything's messed up so um, B is 10 to the negative 11th okay so let's put how to get negative 22 there negative 4 uh, B scale some times 10 to the negative 11th so I want it to be times 10 B scale times Let's do 1 e 10. OK, so that's, what is cyan? Oh, that's the magnetic field. Too big, too big. 8. OK, now we got it. Oh, and now I just need to make this bigger. So let's make this negative 3. Can't see that one. Negative 2. Negative one. Okay, so I don't know why, why my charge is so tiny. Let's. I guess I should print that out. Print. Uh, charge dot q times charge dot v. 
So it's 10 to the negative 7th. Oh, because I multiplied by the charge. Okay, so I need this needs to be, this is too small. So let's say 10 to the 6th. Too big. 10 to the 5th. Too big. 10 to the 4th. Got it. Ah, let's say 4 times 10 to the 4th. Okay, so now we have it. So you see everything is in a different direction. So it's moving this way. The, uh, this is the R vector, and that's the magnetic field vector. Okay. Uh, let's make this a little bit smaller. And now let's do the same thing. Let's make uh, the electric field at different locations. So I could actually just go back over here for my E field stuff, and I'm going I'm to copy all this because I don't want to retype it. Yeah, I'm that lazy. That's true. Okay, so I can delete all. Uh, I'm going to keep the, I don't want R. I'm going to delete that stuff. And then I'm going to go down here. I don't really need to print that. And then I'm going to just paste. Now I'm going to say uh, R is the same. This B, I need to recalculate as this. So I don't want to calculate the electric field. I want to calculate the magnetic field. And then this is going to be B scale times B. And then I made the color is cyan, so I need to change that. And that's, oh, I had it at 20. Let's put it back at 10. And now my scale's too big. Let's change this to 7. Excellent. Now it's too small, but that's fine. Okay, I like that. So there, that is a display of the magnetic field due to a moving charge. This could be an electric current, and I, you could replace this with the wire. It doesn't really matter. But the important point is that we have this pattern of field due to a moving charge. Now, I, I can actually change the location of this, but I'm not, I'm not going to. Um, you know, if I, I want to move it to a different place, um, let me rerun that because I messed up everything. Uh, then you'd still get some kind of pattern like that. So one of the ways to deal with this, let me turn my camera on. Okay, so if, if you take um, your, your thumb and you put it in the direction of QV, then your fingers of your right hand curl around in the direction of the magnetic field. Uh, and, and you'll notice that th this does make a circular pattern. So one of the textbooks I really like, Matter and Interactions, calls this a curly field uh, instead of the electric field due to a point charge, which is kind of radially outward, which we call a Coulomb field. Uh, let's do this real quick. What if I change the sign of the charge? I make this negative Q. It's still moving in the same direction. What happens? Well, in that case, now the QV is a vector pointing the opposite direction. But still, my right hand rule works. If I put my right hand and my thumb in the direction of QV, the fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field, which is now the opposite direction. Okay, so that's important to think about as QV. I've seen some people say, oh, use your left hand rule for negative charges and your right hand rule for positive charges. Don't do that. Trust me, you're going to make some bad's going to happen. So don't do that. Okay. Um, did I talk about the magnetic? I did not talk about that. Okay, let me switch back to paper and then uh, say one more thing about magnetic fields. So here I have, let's review, because there's not that many important things to say. But here I have uh, this is F equals QE and E equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over r squared r hat that's the electric field and that's the force due to the electric field now what about the force due to a moving charge in a magnetic field this is e b if i have a magnetic field then the force on a charge is equal to q v cross b there's that cross product again and and there's some symmetry here right um in that the magnetic field B is mu naught over 4 pi QV cross R hat 
over the magnitude of r squared. Let me also say, some people, since r hat is r divided by the magnitude of r, if I put that in here, you get this form. b equals mu naught over 4 pi qv cross r hat, which is r, so qv cross r. But now I have to divide by, uh, I have an r squared and another r, so this is the magnitude of r cubed. So that's the same thing, but you'll see, you'll see both of these. Uh, and if you do this as just a scalar, which some people write, which I don't think they should, uh, it would look like mu naught over 4 pi q v. Uh, now this r doesn't matter, so it should be q v over r squared sine theta. Okay, but that doesn't tell you the direction. I don't really like that, and I'm going to cross it out. Okay, but here are your key things. The force on a charge in electric field what creates an electric field? The force on a charge, a moving charge in a magnetic field, what creates a magnetic field? And you see that a moving charge creates a magnetic field and a moving charge in a magnetic field experiences a force, same as over here. Now do not, do not think that a charge could create an electric field and also experience a force from that field. That doesn't work, okay? It can't, it can't push itself. Okay, I made this way too long, but that, that's an introduction to electric and magnetic fields. Hopefully you find that helpful. I, I'll share the links to those two codes below. Um, I think they can help kind of visualize, especially for the magnetic field. It's very difficult to visualize, but I'll leave you there. Bye, I'll talk to you later.